Alright, this is Fakafon's review of Super Mario RPG on the Super Nintendo. Let me just start by saying this. Mario RPG is one of my favorite games ever, so if it seems like this review is a little bit biased, no shit! It's biased, you. Anyway, let's start with the story of the game. Now, the story of the game is <laughs> really not complicated. So, Princess Peach is dawdling around outside, and then, you know, there's little flowers and butterflies and stuff, and then Bowser comes in and kidnaps her! So it's up to Mario to save her again, which we promptly do. Five minutes into the game and you already saved the princess from Bowser. But then, just right, just when you think you're gonna, uh, you're just about to save her, ultimate, ultimate cock block. block! A fucking huge source comes from the sky, crashes into Bowser's castle, and everyone is flown away into the world. So of course you, you, you don't know what to do, so the little toad tells you like, you gotta go see the chancellor in no, no, Mushroomville or something, which you do. And along the way you see some Goombas and you kill them, but they're also mushrooms, so I don't know, I guess this game is racist. You know, you get to Mushroomville and the censor is, chancellor is like, you know what, uh, I'm old, go save the princess. And when you go outside you see some kind of, I don't know, yeah, this might take a while, so uh, let's talk about the characters in the game. Uh, you of course control Mario, which is obvious from the title, which is Mario RPG. And of course you don't control Luigi, because Luigi is inexplicably just completely absent. I mean, in this game there are actually cameos from people in other games, like Samus, Link, but not Luigi. Fuck that guy, man. Anyway, so you control Mario, and there's a lot of characters you meet actually. There's some classic characters like Bowser, Peach, the Chancellor, but there's also a lot of new characters that the the people from the game invented, like uh, Malo, who nobody likes, Geno, who everyone likes, uh, Booster, who looks like some kind of, I don't know, Wario's uncle or something like that. You meet some kind of extremely strong martial artist who's like s as small as an apple in Monstro Town. Anyway, a lot of stuff, and honestly I can't name them all because it's awesome. Oh yeah, there's a pirate shark. That's cool too. What I'm kind of getting at here is that this game used a lot of creativity and it shows. It's funny, it's goofy, there's a lot of stuff to do, there's a lot of things to see. It's marvelous. The enemy selection in this game is awesome. I have to be honest, the first time I played the game, I wasn't sure what kind of enemies there was going to be because I said, well, okay, there's going to be Goombas, Turtles, uh, perhaps Shy Guys, but what else? And they did a lot of stuff, actually, and just created a lot of enemies inspired by uh, the older Mario games. Incredible and amazing. They've, I mean, they've introduced all this new stuff, but it never feels like it doesn't belong or it doesn't make any sense. It feels like it really still st still stays in the Mario universe, except for Coolex, but that's so obviously a boss from Final Fantasy. No one questioned it. And speaking of Coolex, there's a lot of bosses in this game, uh, which is traditional to pretty much anything SquareSoft. And the bosses, well, what can I say? There's a lot of sub bosses like Below, more that guy who throws bombs in the mines or stuff like that. And there's also a few major bosses, and you know that by the type of music they play. Oh uh, yeah. Now the bosses there are, there's some kind of, uh, at the beginning of the game there's like some giant shy guy guy, and instead of, and he has like some kind of sword pogo stick, if that makes any sense. Uh, he's actually pretty easy to kill, you just throw lightning at him and he keeps, get, keeps getting stunned and well he sucks. Uh, and then there's also some kind of bow guy who's named Boyer, yeah, <laughs> that's not very creative but whatever. Some kind of bow guy who throws like paralyzing arrow and the only reason he's annoying is because he shoots arrows at buttons. And those buttons mean that you cannot use them in fights, so for example the item button, if he shoots that you can't use items, so it sucks. Uh, what else, there was some kind of die, like some people morph together and form that kind of Popovich, Skakalovich, what the fuck was his name, anyway it's a stupid name. Uh, what else, there's like, there's like a joke of the Power Rangers, like five guys called the Axe Rangers and they, well they fight with Axe, so yeah, and they have a giant robot. And there's also uh, one of the bosses is like you know at the beginning of the game there's a big sword that falls on the castle. Well, there's that guy, obviously. Woo! But here's the tricky part. When I f when I first played this game, I thought the sword was actually the last boss of the game. But no, it turns out the last boss of the game, Smithy, is not the sword because the sword is just a portal to another world or something like that. So anyway, once you beat that guy, you get inside his mouth and it leads you to the other world, which is kind of mechanical and spooky and stuff. And that's when you realize you're fighting some old enemies and old bosses you already fought. Because the, the people you were fighting were actually some kind of machine made out of goo or something like that. Anyway, you go see Smithy's uh, Smithy, which hence the name, 
And then, of course, he has the last star, so you kick his ass, and he doesn't like that, so he sends you to hell, quite literally. And then you kick his ass again, and then the most incredible ending of any fucking game you've ever seen in your fucking life, man. This is how you make the end of a game. A fucking spectacular cutscene that's amazing, just amazing. You know, games at the time didn't have good cutscenes. It had like, uh, what kind of ending did they have? Congratulations, you beat the game, or like two images that said like, you're so good, you're so great, but nothing that lasted like 10 minutes. They did the same thing in Paper Mario, like this big grand finale, and it's just, what a reward, man. You finish the game, and they give you, they give you that reward. Well, anyway, enough of my fanboyery. Let's talk about more technical aspects of the game. If I look at the graphics, well, the graphics are really good. I mean, it's a similar 3D environment, where kind of isometric, if you want. And you move around, and uh, yeah, in this game, you can actually jump in the when you're not in the uh, in the combat mode, like in the overhead mode when you're moving around. You can jump. Isn't that amazing? Name one other RPG game where you can do that. Okay, you probably can, but you know what I mean. At the time, uh, like Final Fantasy games and Chrono Trigger, you couldn't jump. You had to. You could only jump at like specific spots of the game. Here, you can jump whenever you fuck you want, because he's Mario, and he jumps, and that's what he does. And apart from that, well, the characters look amazing, the backgrounds look amazing, uh, the animation is pretty good. It's just really good. And if I look at the music and the sound effects, again, it's great. So, nothing to add. If I look at the battle mode, well, it's actually really well made. It's a step up from old RPG game systems. Uh, in this uh, mode, you can attack, defend, use magic or use items. But it's more interactive, as you don't just press on attack and wait until it's done. When your character attacks, you can press the attack button again so he performs a better attack. Or if he uses magic, if you press the magic button again at the right time, his magic is going to be stronger. If you block at the right time, when an enemy attacks you, you're going to block the attack instead of taking full damage. And if you block at the perfect timing, like pixel perfect timing, well, you get zero damage, which is really fun. So at cer against certain bosses, it's pretty useful when you know when to block. Uh, especially when you find that little guy in Monster Town. He does like some one-shot kill attacks, but if you block just at the right time, no damage. Apart from that, there's also the items you can use. Well, obviously, like mushrooms that give you HP and like a Phoenix Downloader called Pick Me Up, I think. But here it's a little bit more. It's a, there's a little bit more because when you use an item in battle, you get a small chance to get that item back again. So let's say you use a mushroom, where there's a chance you get another mushroom for no reason. So great, you di you didn't even lose an item. Now, when it comes to the weapon selection of the game, let's just say those people got screwed in the ass, man. Mario uses like Koopa shells. Uh, Malo uses symbols. Peach uses like umbrellas. Okay, Bowser uses some spiked balls, which is good enough. But then you get Geno. That guy uses guns! Man, fuck your shitty hammers or your fucking frying pans and, like, wooden sticks and shit. You get some fucking... You can throw your fist, you can shoot out of your fist fucking cannonballs, you shoot some stars! You shoot stars out of your fucking hands! Stars are the strongest thing in the Mario Universe! Holy fucking shit! And of course, since that's fucking cool, we never saw Geno ever again in any other game. Well, except maybe that, but that doesn't count. So yeah, and they, of course, everyone wanted to see him in Super Smash Brawl, but well, they didn't put it. Are you insane? We can't put a gun guy in a video game for kids. That's just ridiculous. Oh, now do not get me wrong. There are some flaws in this game, of course. Like, for example, there's only a selection of five characters you can control, which uh, I always think in RPGs, when it's under six, it just tends to lack. You, you miss something. You need more character interaction than this, and you need more choice. And also, the story is all over the place. It's fucking unfocused. You never know what the fuck you're doing. Which, well, can be a good thing or a bad thing, I guess, but uh, usually it tends to be a bad thing when you, this story just... <laughs> running around and don't let, hey, look at that, a mole or something. I still liked it, but that's just because I enjoy goofy random stuff, so, you know. Like Colin Mockery, for example. Well, anyway, that's uh, pretty much it for my review. There's a lot of stuff I didn't talk about in this game, because there's a lot more you can do, but uh, I'm gonna stop here or else I'm gonna be like going on for 20 minutes, and that's long to draw. So my recommendation? Hell yes, try this game out! Just because it's old doesn't mean it sucks. I mean, look, we still look at Da Vinci's paintings, don't we?
It's 500 years old, man. Yeah. And anyway, when you play a game where you can actually fight a giant cake, how can the game possibly be bad?